Hello, in measures of morbidity, we have discussed incidence rate and prevalence rate, point prevalence and period prevalence. So for in incidence rate, there are some special incidence rate, which is known as attack rate and secondary attack rate. We need to understand how to calculate secondary attack rate. So here an attack rate is an incidence rate usually expressed as a percent used only when the population is exposed to risk for a limited period of time. This is important point such as during an epidemic. So, attack rate relates the number of cases in the population at risk and reflects the extent of the epidemic. Attack rate is given by the formula. We can use attack rate equal to number of new cases of specified disease number of new cases of specified disease during a specified time interval. So this would be the numerator. And in denominator, we'll take the total population at risk during the same interval, which we have taken for numerator and multiply by the any constant value or 100, 1000, like that. So now, We'll talk about secondary attack rate. So what is the secondary attack rate? Secondary attack rate is defined as the number of exposed persons. That is important. Number of exposed persons developing who developing the disease within the range of the incubation period. So incubation period is the important we need to understand now we have to apply the secondary attack rate formula we can calculate number of exposed persons developing the disease within the range of the incubation period divided by total number of exposed or susceptible contacts multiply by any constants so now some important points for secondary attack rate. The denominator consists of all persons who are exposed to the case. So this is the important point we need to understand when we calculate the secondary attack rate. And more specifically, we can say the denominator may be restricted only to susceptible contacts if means are available to distinguish the susceptible person from the immune. So now the primary case is excluded from both the numerator and denominator once we will calculate. Now for example, we can understand example. So example is suppose there is a family of six consisting out of six, two parents already immune. So four children who are susceptible to a specific disease, say we can say measles. So there occurs a primary case among the remaining children and within a short time, two secondary cases among the remaining children. So we can calculate secondary attack rate is two divided by three. So here four susceptible. And as we know, for a primary case, we need to subtract from the denominator. So two by three is equal to in percentage multiply by 100, we can find out 66. Six.
so the primary case is excluded as i said from both the numerator and denominator and secondary attack rates for this calculation this calculation we have to apply this formula and with help of this formula we can find out the correct answer now some limitations for secondary attack rate we need to understand secondary rate secondary attack rate is limited in its application to infection infectious disease in which the primary case is infective for only a short period of time measured in a days for example we can say like measles or and chicken pox when the primary case is infective over a long period of time for example tuberculosis duration of exposure is an important factor in determining the extent of spread so these points are very important and we need to remember it so with help of that secondary attack rate we can calculate number of contacts developing tuberculosis divided by number of persons weeks per month or year of exposures so these points are important and one more points another limitation of secondary attack rate is to be identify susceptible susceptible so this is the important point it is feasible only in disease such as measles and chicken pox where history can be used as a basis for identification but in many other susceptible cannot be readily identified for example like influenza so in such cases secondary attack rate is based on all exposed family members and still remains a useful tool where there are numerous some clinical sub clinical cases secondary attack rate has a limited meaning further spread cannot be measured without laboratory investigation so one important advantage an additional advantage of the secondary attack rate is that vaccines and non vaccines from several families can be aided to determine the overall attack rates in the vaccinated and unvaccinated population and it's provided the same identification definition for cases and immunization status are used so secondary attack rate was initially developed to measure the spread of an infection within a family this is very important point household or any closed aggregate of persons who have had contact with a case of disease it is also useful to determine whether a disease of unknown etiology is com communicable or not communicable and in evaluating the effectiveness of control measures such as isolation and immunization so these are the points are important we need to understand when we are going to calculate the secondary attack rate then we can calculate easily thank you